Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. In late August of 2017, Hurricane Harvey barreled down on Texas and Louisiana for days, leaving a catastrophic amount of damage in its wake. About a week before Harvey made landfall on August 18th, Sierra Sutton reported her boyfriend, Stephen Coleman, missing, claiming that he left two days prior and hadn't returned. Stephen was an aspiring rapper who already had a big following on YouTube. Then on August 22nd, an equipment operator working at a landfill discovered a torso in the trash. What investigators would find out was that Sierra and Stephen got into an argument the night of August 16. And after he went to bed, she shot him, dismembered him with a machete and dumped his remains in different garbage receptacles around the city. Her 10 year old daughter was in the same apartment when all of this went down. The investigation into Stephen's disappearance picked up after Harvey and police link the missing person's report to the discovered torso. While trying to gather more information on Stephen's death, police learned that Sierra, Stephen's girlfriend, had also vanished. Police received a tip that she was in Louisiana and learned that she told some friends about what she did to Stephen. She was arrested in September of 2017 in Louisiana and then extradited back to Texas. Before he died, Stephen told one of his friends that if anything bad ever happened to him, police should investigate Sierra. So in February of 2019, Sierra was convicted of murder and sentenced to 45 years in prison. Now let's look back at the case about a budding artist whose life was ripped away. Emergency crews are getting ready for one of the biggest hurricanes in U.S. history. Harvey is on the doorstep. But at the Baytown landfill, workers make a gruesome discovery that puts all their preparations on hold. Newspaper reporter Matt Hollis covered the shocking story. A worker was using a tractor to push garbage and discovered this, this torso. He immediately informs his supervisor and they call the police. Cops are baffled. The torso belongs to an adult male, but they can't nail the identity of the man who was murdered and chopped up. All around Houston, residents have fled the area, some to other states, seeking shelter from the storm. Police do have a report of a missing person filed only a few days earlier, but they don't know if he's the same guy they found in the landfill. The missing man is 32-year-old Stephen Coleman. He is also an aspiring rap artist with a big presence on YouTube as Slim Da Don. He lives with 30-year-old Sierra Sutton, along with her 10-year-old daughter from another man. She works at a veterinary clinic and has no criminal record. But investigators tell our Nerissa Knight Sierra is at the police station only days before Harvey hits. She actually came in and made a missing persons report uh, of her boyfriend, Stephen Coleman, uh, about 6.30 in the evening. She says Coleman had left the apartment two days earlier and had not returned. He wasn't answering his phone. He wasn't responding to anything on Facebook or anything of that nature. Hurricane Harvey slams into Texas, causing more than 70 deaths and more than $100 billion in damage. But in the aftermath of the devastating storm, police and Coleman's family keep the case alive. They put out the word on Stephen, who has not been seen at work or heard from by his worried family and friends for weeks. It's not like him to not show up at work. He was doing okay here. There was no, you know, no reason he was going to leave, and he had no indication. Uh, so uh, that perplexed them. But now they find that Sierra and her daughter are missing too. Has she fled the hurricane along with thousands of others? Or is there some murderous vendetta in the works aimed at Sierra and Stephen? We had scheduled Sierra to come in for an interview uh, to kind of follow up on her original report, and she failed to show up. Alarmed, cops get a search warrant for the couple's apartment. And what they find does not give them much hope of locating Stephen or Sierra and her little girl. We discovered some areas in the bedroom uh, that showed some significant uh, blood uh, that really led us to believe something tragic had happened. Investigators take blood samples from the apartment to see if they can get a DNA match on that male headless torso found in the landfill. The results are still out on that test. It all just kind of points uh, to that direction. So while we can't say for certain that it is uh, Mr. Coleman, that is certainly our suspicion. 
and then a big break in the case of missing Sierra Sutton. We received a phone call that you know she had gone to Louisiana. We solicited the help from several other agencies in Louisiana to help us in trying to locate Sierra, and we, fortunately, we were successful in that. Police are relieved to find she is alive and well, and that her daughter is safe at a friend's house. But what they hear about Sierra Sutton and Stephen Coleman is chilling. She had divulged to some of the people in Louisiana of what she had done here to varying degrees. Lieutenant Steve Doris won't go into graphic detail, but reporter Matt Haas has gone over all of the evidence and witness statements. Graphic details about what Sierra told her friend she did to Stephen Coleman. And it's an absolute shocker. They had an argument and then at some point he decides to go to bed. And then, while he's asleep, she shoots him in the head, point blank. While he's asleep in the bed. While he's asleep in the bed and while her daughter is in the other room. And according to the witnesses who say they heard Sierra's story, it's only the beginning of the horror. In an attempt to conceal the body, she discovers that he's too heavy and she can't move him. So she comes up with this idea to get a machete and cut his body into pieces. This happens with a, a, a child in another room. And chop off his arms, chop off his legs, chop off his head. And then to wrap these pieces up, put them in your car. She's driving around town with pieces of his body and putting it in different dumpsters. Hollis says Baytown police also have an incriminating videotape they will not release of Sierra at a Walmart shortly after reporting Coleman missing. She was caught on surveillance video at a store, apparently using his credit card. It also appears she was buying material to help conceal the body. She was purchasing duct tape and a foam mattress. Police aren't giving any theories about a motive, but they say Stephen may have had a premonition about his fate. Mr. Coleman had actually confided in somebody that if he came up missing or if something ever happened to him to make sure that the police look at Miss Sutton, uh, which was kind of an ominous thing. And while cops are still waiting to see if there's a DNA match between the blood samples at the apartment and the torso at the landfill, they aren't wasting any time. They figure they have enough evidence to go to Louisiana, put handcuffs on Sierra Sutton, and charge her with murder. Once we figured out where she was at, uh, she was actually coming out of her apartment to get in a vehicle and leave when she was arrested. She's extradited back to Texas she awaits arraignment and police can only wait to see if she tells the judge the same horrifying story that her friends say she told them in Louisiana. It's a lot for one person to do um, but we're looking at those angles to see if we can you know connect anybody else to this crime but to this point we have not. Her alone. Her alone. It's unusual for a woman to have that kind of to go so far as to chop a man's body up with your child in the other room is uh, pretty depraved.